please focus and adjust volume and tone. The voice level is identical with the narration that follows the main title. The modern operating room provides an enormous variety of instruments and technical equipment to help make difficult surgical procedures effective and safe. Despite these aids, there still arise many situations in which control of hemorrhage constitutes a problem. Through research, a new and unique material has been created for the control of bleeding under difficult circumstances. The chemist knows this substance as oxidized regenerated cellulose. Its properties were first demonstrated in the animal laboratory. When a deeply incised wound is created in the liver of a dog, profuse bleeding ensues. The wound is gently packed with a double thickness of oxidized regenerated cellulose and the excess material is trimmed away. Hemostasis is complete in two to three minutes. Upon contact with blood, the material characteristically turns dark brown or black by the conversion of hemoglobin to acid hematin. The recovery of this animal was uneventful. In this case, the dog was sacrificed 58 days later and the liver removed and sectioned. There is no evidence of any remaining hemostatic material, despite the unusually large amount used for experimental purposes. Histological studies showed that absorption is complete. Of course, the rate of absorption varies somewhat from host to host and with the amount of material used. Many tests have been developed to study the absorption characteristics of the new material in tissues. For purposes of demonstration, Cellulose in the form of ordinary gauze is here compared to oxidized regenerated cellulose by implanting 75 milligram pledgets of surgical gauze in the subcutaneous tissues of rats using a modification of the Franz lattice technique. After seven days, the tissue reacts to the implanted mass of ordinary gauze with encapsulation and marked vascular proliferation. In contrast, oxidized regenerated cellulose is similarly implanted in another series of animals. Seven days later, in the majority of animals, the hemostatic material is reduced to a barely visible soft gelatinous mass, and there is a negligible reaction in the surrounding tissues. At 15 days, complete absorption has occurred in all animals, and gross evidence of inflammation or encapsulation is not seen. Histologically, the tissue reaction is minimal. To illustrate an important application of oxidized regenerated cellulose in cardiovascular surgery, the thoracic aorta of a large dog is excised and a crimp decron graft implanted.
When, for purposes of demonstration, the proximal and distal clamps are released, there is the usual profuse flow of blood through the interstices of the graft. Clinically, such loss of blood may become excessive. However, when strips of oxidized regenerated cellulose are applied to the graft, this blood loss is minimized. Following re-establishment of the circulation, effective control of bleeding is accomplished with little loss of blood. The animal used in this demonstration made an uneventful recovery without signs of toxicity, local irritation, or constriction of the graft. Having demonstrated the safety and efficacy of oxidized regenerated cellulose, the stability of the new material is studied by subjecting samples to an accelerated aging process. In incubators held at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of one and one half years of aging on the shelf is achieved. The only physical changes noted are a slight discoloration and a moderate loss of bursting strength as determined on a tensiometer. The hemostatic activity of the artificially aged material is tested biologically using a biopsy punch technique in a dog's spleen. This method ensures complete and constant contact of the sample with blood under uniform conditions. It is seen that aging makes no significant difference in the hemostatic activity of oxidized regenerated cellulose. Other tests show that its absorbability in the tissues also remains unchanged. What then is this new surgical hemostat? What gives it its desirable properties? Purified alpha cellulose derived from cotton linters is dissolved in an organic solvent which converts the cellulose to a viscose. The viscose is then forced through spinnerets into a coagulating bath. Here the cellulose is regenerated in the form of pure uniform filaments. These are then made into carded fiber pads, similar in appearance to absorbent cotton. Or they are spun into threads and knitted. The regenerated cellulose has something not found in the natural fiber. Uniform molecular and physical structure. It is this uniformity which makes it possible to achieve accurate control of the all-important oxidation treatment which follows. Oxidation modifies the basic cellulose molecule. By this step, a primary alcohol radical is oxidized to a carboxyl group. The resultant chemical structure is the molecular unit of oxidized regenerated cellulose. It is this combination of regeneration and oxidation, starting originally with a pure form of cellulose which gives the final material its unique properties. As supplied in sterile form, ready for use, it is a whitish material with a faint caramel-like aroma. Microscopically, the uniform diameter of the fibers is a characteristic physical feature. In humans, bleeding from the gallbladder bed following cholecystectomy is sometimes difficult to control by conventional means. Here, an absorbable hemostatic material may be especially useful, 
although it should never, of course, be regarded as a substitute for good technique and the proper use of sutures and ligatures. As always, only the minimal amount of the hemostatic gauze required should be used. When the material is properly applied, oozing is quickly controlled without increased drainage or other evidence of local irritation. Resection of the liver substance itself often poses a difficult surgical problem in which ligature of bleeding points may be ineffective or impractical. In such cases, Hemorrhage is readily controlled by oxidized, regenerated cellulose. Here, a liver biopsy is being performed by the removal of two nodules in the right lobe of the liver. In this case, after the nodule is excised, a single suture is used to bring the edges of the wound closer together and help maintain the hemostatic material in place. This is usually unnecessary as the packing quickly becomes adherent to the wound surface and readily retains itself. The adjacent nodule is treated in the same manner. Bleeding is promptly controlled, and this is the appearance of the liver at the completion of the procedure. Donor sites for skin grafts sometimes show delayed, persistent oozing. For purposes of comparison, grafts cut at a depth of 12 ten thousandths of an inch were taken from both thighs of a patient requiring extensive grafting as a result of burns. To the first site, ordinary petrolatum gauze is applied as a dressing. At the same time, the graft site on the opposite limb is dressed with a single layer of oxidized, regenerated cellulose. When the petrolatum gauze is changed, 10 days later, there is marked adherence of the dressing to the wound and fresh bleeding is induced. However, when the hemostatic gauze dressing is removed from the opposite site at 10 days, it strips off easily without inducing further bleeding, and healing has progressed in a satisfactory manner. Only a margin of cellulose in the area which was in contact with the skin remains intact. The rest of the material has been dissolved. The gauze has adequately controlled bleeding and epithelialization is complete. Here is an emergency situation all too often seen in the clinic or in the office. This finger wound, in which there is loss of substance, resulted from a paper cutter accident. The new hemostatic material is applied directly to the wound to control the bleeding. The finger is then wrapped with ordinary gauze as an outer dressing. Four days later, when the wound is redressed, dissolution of the cellulose at the area of injury is clearly seen. A fresh piece of regenerated oxidized cellulose is applied at each dressing. New epithelium is now forming, and the area of solubilized cellulose grows less as the exposed tissues shrink in size. The ready removal of the hemostatic material without adherence to wound tissues prevents secondary hemorrhage, discomfort, and delayed healing. These same properties are likewise valuable in oral surgery. This patient has just had all of his lower teeth extracted. Oxidized regenerated cellulose is used as a packing and quickly arrests the bleeding. The edges of the wound are sutured over the hemostatic material. 
Six days later, the lower gum looks like this. Healing is complete by 15 days, and the patient is ready to be fitted for dentures. In this patient, a grade four hemophiliac, four teeth are extracted after the usual long and careful period of hematologic study. Following the extractions, blood is removed from the sockets with sterile gauze. The oxidized regenerated cellulose is then implanted to fill almost the entire socket. This not only controls primary and immediate hemorrhage, but also prevents the occurrence of the almost inevitable secondary hemorrhage, which may occur from some hours to several days postoperatively. An overlay of the carded form of the hemostatic material is applied to the extraction site and the operative area covered with a splint. The time required for primary healing after extraction is between four and 15 days. The extraction of teeth in patients with hemophilia is a dangerous procedure. However, the use of oxidized regenerated cellulose together with other well-known techniques greatly increases the safety factor on patients afflicted with this and similar blood dyscrasia. In cardiovascular surgery, oxidized regenerated cellulose finds one of its most dramatic fields of usefulness. Here, a large abdominal aortic aneurysm is being resected. The excised portion of the aorta is replaced by a crimp dacron graft strips of the hemostatic material are wrapped about the graft and gently compressed. Little oozing occurs with re-establishment of the blood flow and substantial blood loss is prevented. Neurologic surgery also is an important field of use for oxidized regenerated cellulose. In this operation to excise a brain tumor, the scalp flap is first wrapped with a hemostatic material to control any oozing during the rest of the procedure. The retracted bone flap and attached muscle is similarly wrapped. Venous bleeding from dura and brain is controlled with carded fiber pledgets of the hemostatic material. No attempt is made to remove these pledgets subsequently, as no local reaction or neurologic irritation has been observed. After the tumor has been excised, the hemostatic gauze is removed from the bone and scalp flaps before final closure of the scalp. These are but a few examples of the applications of oxidized regenerated cellulose to many varieties of surgical procedures. Other reported applications include radical sinus operations, pneumonectomy and thoracotomy, intracardiac and vascular surgery, maxillofacial surgery, gastrectomy, abdominal perineal resections, hemorrhoidectomy, head and neck dissections, thoracic and abdominal sympathectomies, nose and throat surgery, orthopedic procedures. Oxidized regenerated cellulose has been shown to be safe and effective, but it should not be regarded as a substitute for careful technique. This new absorbable hemostatic material does, however, provide yet another useful adjunct to the surgeon's armamentarium.